Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and I got another daily video for you today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Justin Fitzpatrick's shoes. So come join us and check out what we have for you today. So, Jay Fitzpatrick, Justin Fitzpatrick, kind of goes by both, in other words. But for those of you who don't know, it's kind of one of those newer brands out there that it's emerging. Um, it is named after the gentleman who started it, Justin. And uh, because it's a newer brand, not everyone knows about it. Some of you may be known in the industry a little bit more about other brands of shoes. And um, this one is one of those that I think everyone should look into uh, just because it's a smaller company, but they're very fine-tuned to detail orientation. They have high-quality footwear that's at a higher standard than your average pair of shoes would ever be. Um, basically, for the price point, I haven't really come across anything as well-built as these are. There are some shoes that are even more expensive than the J. Fitzpatrick's that aren't quite in that same category of quality build either. But Justin really does know what he's doing. Kind of an interesting background story on him. He's a younger guy. He's close to my age, uh, probably in his early 30s, I believe. Um, sorry, Justin, if I'm off, but it could be in his late 20s like I am too. But uh, Justin's one of those, and I have to grab my notepad for this to really be able to tell you the exact thing. But uh, Justin is an American man who uh, lives in England, at least at don't know for sure if he's still living there or if he moved back to the US, who learned in Italy how to make shoes and how to work on them, and his shoes are made in Spain. So it's kind of a big old loop of uh, quality craftsmanship, all those areas and countries where you know high quality footwear comes out of anyways. So very cool, very interesting about him. Um, his footwear is really designed to be kind of one of those things that's not too classy but not too fashion forward it's kind of like that in between and he kind of brings back certain styles that have been out of popularity and out of style for nearly a hundred years even and he kind of revamps it redoes it and then brings it on the market and everyone blows up about it and then he discontinues it and it's gone so it's kind of uh, one of those that if you see a style you want you want to grab it quick because it's probably not going to be around next year because he's always coming out with new stuff all the time now, as far as the styles go, we mentioned that that there's just one of those things that he really loves to have something a little unique and unusual. I mean, traditionally, you're looking at this shoe here. It's just a basic cap toe. Well, when you look a little bit closer, there are certain fine details that really kind of set it apart. This is where we get into the quality of everything. So if you look at this plain basic cap toe here, the stitch area does look a little bit wider, as you can tell right here looks definitely wider and that's because what they do and that's part of the quality aspect is they do an extra row of stitching typically on most shoes you see just two rows where on Justin's shoes he has three rows of stitching so it's extra durability and strength and not only that it also has like a different appearance to it, it just looks different in other words it's a cap toe but there's something different about it and something as small as adding a third row of stitching that changes the overall shoe and it's not just on those i mean wingtips and a number of other styles that he has same thing three rows of stitching there so you know i'll take pictures obviously and get better close-ups of it and that's something that really changes the overall appearance i've noticed and not only that again quality gets bumped up because of that because they think about that in the first place now the other thing that a lot of people know about Justin Fitzpatrick's most of his shoes are traditionally with the leather sole um, that he does have a few models that have a, a rubber one as well but not quite as many but from the look of it everyone thinks that oh, it's just an adhered sole but in reality it's actually blind stitched um, all of his leather soles they come standard like that so what happens is it's a Goodyear welt design and it's stitched through the welt up here, obviously, for those of you who are a little more familiar about that. But what they do on the bottom of the sole with the blind stitch, they splice the leather just a little bit, fold that piece of leather over, go through with the stitching machine, stitch it all together, and then fold that leather back over with an adhesive that binds it back together and basically makes it look like just a straight, you know, 
adhered leather sole, which is very interesting. Another fine little detail are these little nails up top here on the toe for extra reinforcement for the gentlemen out there that tend to wear out their toes a little bit quicker. So that's definitely a nice little added touch. Um, these two here are in for toe plates, French toe plates. Uh, so we're going to be removing those anyways and putting French toe plates on them. But if you're not needing it necessarily, it never hurts to have at least some nails to reinforce that. That's kind of that stage below adding a Triumph or a Lulu toe plate, which I'll show you real quick on these, which is that right there. That's a toe plate for you. And that's what these ones are going to have done to them. Another thing that uh, some of you may notice also, if you're looking really closely, are fine details like piping. There is a piping on the inside here. Unfortunately, the camera won't be able to quite catch it, but if you run your finger across it, you'll feel like it's kind of rounded off on the edges. When you add a piping like that, it actually helps reinforce the, um, the area here where it secures between the liner on the inside and the outer leather on there as well. So that's definitely a huge thumbs up. A lot of high-end footwear that's running nearly $1,000 even, even they don't do things like that, which is pretty standard nowadays. So it's not standard to do piping on the areas right here on the edges, which that's considered not standard anymore. And he does that on his shoes, which is phenomenal. Now, these aren't a 360 degree welt. It is a 270, meaning that it's stitched from right under the heel base all the way around to the other side under the heel base. And they do that to give it kind of that slimmer profile on the back of the heel. If he did a 360 degree welt where it goes all the way around with welting, it'd look a little bit bulky and that just doesn't doesn't go with these shoes too well having such a bulky heel and sole you want something a little slimmer and lower profile so he uses a leather heel ren on the insider rand ren i always mix up the names but um, that's typical you find that on western boots whether they're high quality or low quality most of them tend to use plastic but it seems like most of the ones i've come across on his were actually using a leather ren which is really cool and it's the same thickness as the welt as well and they splice it in, in such a way where it connects with the welt that it almost in some of the shoes it almost seems seamless i have seen it with a little bit of a gap like this one has a tiny little gap there but that's just uh, that's not even something that really anybody would notice that can happen even on a you know two thousand dollar pair of boots or shoes where there's going to be a little bit of a gap connecting point like that and i see that very often now one thing that uh you obviously might not notice because there is obviously a um, a wax coating on it, but the heel blocks on these are leather as well. So leather stacked heel blocks, it's not using that fiberboard or plastic or any of that other kind of junk. It's actual stacked leather on there. So that's another huge plus as well on them. Now, as far as the liner on them, they are a leather lined leather lined insole back here on the inside just about everywhere there's a leather liner on these so that's definitely a great thing it's a little easier to maintain if you're using a synthetic material and a great pair of shoes kind of cheapens the shoe overall so you don't want to do that on a beautiful pair of shoes like these but definitely a lot of small fine details that most who are just not a cobbler or not in the shoe industry they don't tend to notice but when you actually pick up a pair of shoes you just notice that there's something a little bit different about them all around always i mean from the blind stitching to the tubing on the trim here to the triple roll stitching there's just everywhere you look on this shoe there's it's just something different it's not off in a bad way it's just often in a different way and it's kind of funny i guess they actually have a name for it at, at his place it's called the justin fitzpatrick touch so quite literally, it does have the Justin Fitzpatrick touch and some people just can't put their finger on what it is that that's going on there. They got the nice fudging here when that's what it's called. So you've got the really dense stitching right there on the welt and then around the welt they go through with a fudging wheel and that leaves kind of an imprint and it's nice and beautiful there to have that kind of kind of just makes it stand out just a little bit more. So that's kind of a nice little feature. Uh, most of them I've noticed that they have kind of a straight cut around the sole area here, but once you get underneath where the arch is, it's a little bit more rounded on where they trim everything out. So it's a really nice, interesting touch from the factory that they have on it. Um, the midsoles on the inside are leather as well, uh, cork underneath. So overall great great construction especially for the price point just can't be matched basically 
Now, as far as the styles go, um, they do only make men's styles. That's kind of what he's after is being able to provide a, you know, nice, elegant shoe for a gentleman that's built properly you know at a great phenomenal price and so they don't really do much with ladies shoes unfortunately um in all honesty a lady's shoe trying to get it to a good quality standard or good ear welting or any of that kind of introduction it's very hard to do they tend to look a little clunky where on gentleman's shoe um because it's larger you it's it's hard i mean it's not too hard to make it clunky but it's also kind of hard to make it clunky at the same time if, if you kind of get get what i'm saying in other words but uh overall i mean as far as details even like with the sole in particular they have um soles that are called uh chestnut tan soles also coined as the comfort welt design obviously it's different from what the welt is but typically these soles are designed for more of a comfort feature in other words so they have a little more flexibility than say the um the jr soles here uh they break in they're a little more flexible they're still very durable a lot more than a number of those other soles out there on the market that are uh tanned in such a way where they tend to wear out quickly they absorb moisture and minerals and they just degrade this one still has a tanning method very similar to what the oak bark tanning has done on the jr but it's done in a way that it's a little bit softer so it molds to your foot once the shoes are broken in, obviously you have to break them in. They might not fit you immediately um, right out of the box, you know, perfectly where, you know, some shoes out there that are cheaply made, they're designed for immediately out of the box, comfortable type of scenario. Any kind of welted shoes that are good, you're welted that, I mean, you have to go through a break in period and that's normal. So once you've got these broken in you know the cork foot that's going to be you know formed to your foot the leather liners and everything as well as even the sole will be you know fitted to your walking pattern as well on these as far as the fit goes um the fit there isn't too much options i've noticed as far as being able to have you know a large selection of widths unfortunately with justin shoes uh, they are a little bit more of a slimmer profile look but they still accommodate a good variety of different uh width sizes it's just you you might want to look at his website to see which last might be a better fit for you he has great descriptions on it uh to be able to explain that different lasts will have a different fit ones one last might be just a tiny bit longer one's gonna have a wider toe box or something like that so you just need to identify which particular last might be best for you as far as being able to get a pair in and having it fit he's he's very flexible on being able to exchange them for you and get it taken care of obviously it's a little bit harder for you to be able to try because there aren't many places that sell justin fitzpatrick's footwear you know they're they have a few places out here in the u.s a few out in europe um i think they were talking about something about asia i believe too i have to i'd have to double check that guy's moving so fast it's crazy so you know there, he's got places that you can order from but if you're um you know say like here in colorado there's no real place to be able to try it on but in order to be able to keep the cost down without having to do middleman markups you have to understand the fact that if you want to be able to you know get a beautiful phenomenally made shoe that's a, basically can go toe to toe with a pair of thousand dollar pair of shoes and you want to be able to spend you know three four five hundred dollars for a pair you have to be able to cut the fat and trim the fat somewhere and that's with middleman markups so ordering direct is part of the attitude that it seems that he has so you'd end up having to order through his website but again very easy to work with uh you know very flexible and everything as far as again the fit the the last we mentioned it's kind of interesting he uses lasts that were used by a bespoke shoemaker called gaziano and girling for those of you who are familiar with it you all know who they are for those of you who are not familiar with it, Gatsion Girling is one of those bespoke shoemakers, bespoke meaning custom made shoes that um, they've made shoes for a very long time. Some of the highest quality shoes out there on the market. Uh, this is one of the places where Justin ended up learning from was in Gatsion Girling from what I understand some of his background as well as, you know, it, their last makers in general they know what they're doing so you get a phenomenally fit shoe they've made shoes for you know 
queens, kings, uh, presidents, you know, famous people all around the world even, uh, and they're not a cheap shoe. I mean, I think their their average cost is like two and a half thousand, and that's average. I mean, uh, there are some that go even higher, like much, much higher. So when you're talking about shoes like that, and you've got a pair of very well-priced pair of shoes being built off of a last like that, you know that this guy knows what he's doing if he if he has such ties to a huge well-known high quality brand like Gatsyan and Girling. So you can you can rest assured that he's not going to cut cut out corners somewhere just to make a few extra bucks off of you. He he knows uh what what kind of clientele base he's after and he's after those people that know quality for sure. As for the last styles Currently, he has 11 different last styles. So again, for the fit, you'll be able to find something that may work for you. Otherwise, you know, just kind of uh, check out maybe some of his uh, made to order program, MTO. He does have that available as well. So if you need to order a particular style that might not be available with some form of changes or something or on a particular last, definitely check out that made to order program. Um, again, in short, it's MTO. So you can take a look at that and that might be a great option for you as well. It's not quite a bespoke made where it's custom fitted to you. That's a huge process which involves a lot of work, but a made to order, they can do certain adjustments that will make that shoe fit very well and feel a little more customized just for your foot. A few interesting facts about uh, Justin and his brand. So as far as his brand goes in general, um, a lot of his styles are actually named after his hometown in uh, Washington, Seattle, or Seattle, Washington. Uh, so it's named after streets, you know, um, towns that he was that were around him and everything. So typically all the names are after that. So it's kind of a, just a little bit of a fun fact. Another thing is that you can really understand Justin better. He's actually the creator of the shoe snob.com. It's a big old shoe forum and group basically where there's a lot of news about footwear, what's going on in the industry. And he's the creator of that. He runs it. So again, he's really into everything about shoes and everything that has to do with about shoes, boots, uh, shoe accessories and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to definitely be able to find out that uh, going to his website there at the shoesnob.com alone, you'll see all the great information and he, he doesn't, you know, compete with the other guys on such a level where he says, oh, don't buy their stuff. Come to me and buy my stuff. No, he promotes other brands as well. Brands that are directly trying to compete with him and basically trying to run him out of business, he still promotes them too. So huge respect for him on that for sure. And I mean, he shares, he wants everybody to be well educated on footwear and what's going on in the industries. So definitely check out the shoesnob.com. I'll leave a link in the description and you can find out more about footwear in general. And also be sure to check out his website, jfitzpatrick.com to pick out a few styles on that. Now, a few things I'd like to mention before ending this, um, accessories he's very interesting about all his accessories i mean he's got things like shoe bags and these are probably some of the best shoe bags i've come across where they've got a nice soft liner but then the outside's got a little more durability a little bit rougher in other words so really cool shoe bags uh so if you're getting a pair make sure you get a couple of those shoe bags for other brands of shoes too Gonna surprise some people and they're like oh you got some justin's you know or justin fitzpatrick's and they open it up and it's not a pair but they're really cool shoe bags shoe trees also i don't know what he's got going on with those in particular from what i understand either he's gonna be uh, continuing on with them but changing them or he's gonna possibly get rid of these particular ones but he's got some fitted ones like this they're really nice uh, all wooden and everything and then they hollow out the bottoms a little bit here to reduce that weight uh, still might be a little bit heavier for travel or shipping around too much but um, definitely a great great last to be able to have these fit a number of other brands of shoes as well not just uh, not just his but that kind of fitted style that means that they have that oops that kind of tapered design right here so it really fits those more dressy and casual types of shoes that you might see out there and uh, definitely well worth it as well now obviously as I mentioned uh, we're doing the toe plates on both these pairs here I'll stick that back in there before I make too much noise with it but um, 
we're doing the French toe plates on both of these. One's getting the Triumph, the other one's getting Lulu toe plates. He used to have that option available to add Lulu toe plates, but it ended up becoming such a, I guess you can say a hassle because the problem was he, if you ordered a pair of shoes, he'd have to have the shoes shipped off from his warehouse or facility or wherever it may be to a, um, you know, a location where they're going to do the toe plates and then they have to be shipped back and then finally they'd be shipped to you. And so it ended up being just a big hassle and I perfectly understand that. So, you know, unfortunately it's not available through him anymore, but he does refer a number of us cobblers as well. Um, I we're thankfully lucky enough to be one of those uh, to be referred by him uh, to send in shoes and bring them in if you're local here or if you're out of state again send them on in to us. One of these were shipped and the other one was dropped in person. Um, so we can definitely take care of that for you if, on his behalf as well. And it's not necessary if you're not somebody that wears out your toes very easily on the bottoms here, right at that toe. You're not needing to get toe plates. Some people just prefer them as a decorative piece. Some people just you know really actually need them but regardless if you decide not to you've at least got that reinforcement from the nails here and if you're somebody that really wears through your toes I suggest looking into those Triumph toe plates um, again not available through Justin's uh, brand anymore but understand the reason as to why and I highly understand why that's the case because I've talked to him about it so again Overall, very interesting brand. J Fitzpatrick is, uh, is his brand name. Justin is his first full name. Um, very well knowledgeable in the industry, highly respected amongst cobblers, amongst shoemakers, shoe shiners, patina guys, you know, all around. He's very active in all the groups, forums. He's got some that he created himself. Uh, he's got his own shoe line and everything. Very skilled, very knowledgeable of what he's doing. And, you know, he at the same time, he's kind of all over the place of, you know, he's close to my age and I know exactly where what it's like. You know, he, you know, you have one idea pop into your head and you start doing and then all of a sudden you got another idea. So you start doing that one at the same time. And there's so much going on that, uh, all I, all I could recommend is go to his websites and just kind of keep an eye on it, see what kind of groups he's part of, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to see some interesting things coming out from, from not only the J Fitzpatrick line, but even the Shoe Snob as well. It's just overall going to be very educational. If you're not planning to buy a pair of his shoes, never hurts to check it out because he's got some really interesting styles. I've had a couple of his ankle high boots come through here uh, where we resold them, and it's one of those that they're just a button up on the side who does that anymore i mean that that style has been out of style for forever basically but he brought it back and those things sold like crazy from what i understand i mean i saw multiple guys in in the groups posting pictures of those boots They're like hey check out my new boots and it's like man those, those that style's been out of commission for nearly a hundred years that's kind of cool so could just at least check out some of the cool stuff that he's got but if you're wanting to find out more about other brands as well, not just his, that's where you check out the shoe snob and you'll be able to find out more details of what's going on in the industry and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Justin, if you watch this, sorry if I made any mistakes or if I didn't cover something that you may have wanted me to cover, I do apologize. I'm still trying to get the hang of uh, not only your brand, but over all these videos too. So I'm doing the best I can but hopefully everyone had enjoyed this video and I believe I covered at least all the important things more details on his website available and the shoe snob as well otherwise make sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video hit that subscribe button to make sure that you're part of the group and know what's going on and hit that notification bell icon to be notified as soon as we have our newest videos out so you can be you know educated on more shoes products accessories and basically everything else about footwear in other words too on my end thank you for watching and we'll see you next time